Chapter Twenty Eight, Dallying Hualien, Nightfall in Sinner's Pit, Part Five. I really don't remember. All right, Xinlin said. Even if nothing could kill him, he still couldn't endure that kind of butchering. So, with the thought, this can't go on, Xinlin resolutely dropped to the ground to fake his death. But even in death, he was trampled to the point of passing out. It was water choking him that roused him, because corpses were usually thrown into the rivers after battles. Xilin went with the river's flow and floated back to the kingdom of Yong'an like a heap of junk. Afterward, he took several years to recover from his wounds, then picked up an unbroken compass to start off anew, and finally made it to his original destination in the south. He then stopped paying attention to what went on in the kingdom of Ban Yue. I'm sorry, Ban Yue muttered again. Fu Yao furrowed his brow. Why does she keep apologizing to you? San Long suddenly spoke up. Ke Mo stated that the state preceptor of Ban Yue left for the Central Plains after a clash between the two armies. Were you involved in that? With that reminder and recalling what was written on the memorial, some things were coming back to Xielian, though only in bits and pieces. Ah,、uh, maybe. It was to save me, Ban Yue said. Everyone turned to look at her, and she said softly. General Hua got flattened because he entered the fray to save me. Xilin instantly remembered the agony of being trampled by thousands, and he hugged his body despite himself. But when he saw two others watching him with unreadable expressions, he pulled himself back in a hurry. He said, "Not flat, not too flat." Who knew why Fu Yao was looking so smug? He said passive aggressively, "Well, aren't you a saint?" Xilin waved dismissively. Nothing of the sort. I don't remember the specifics anymore, but there were two children playing at the time, and I was just going to pick them up and run away immediately. But we didn't manage to retreat fast enough and got caught between the two armies. If that's the case, Fu Yao demanded, "How can you not remember something like that?" Xie Lin replied, "Do you not know how many hundreds of years old I am? So much can happen in just a decade. There's no way to remember everything in detail." Besides, some things are best forgotten. Rather than remembering how I was butchered and trampled hundreds of years ago, I'd prefer to remember that I ate a delicious meat bun yesterday. No? I'm sorry, Ban Yue said. Xie Lin sighed. Oh, Ban Yue, saving you was my own choice. You're not at fault. If you're going to apologize, perhaps it should be to others. Ban Yue was taken aback and hung her head in silence. Xie Lin continued, "But maybe it's because my impression of you is from 200 years ago. But I don't think you're the kind of child who'd seek revenge and betray others. Will you tell me what happened exactly? Why did you open the city gates?" Ban Yue contemplated, shook her head, and remained silent. Then why did you let the snakes out to bite people? Xie Lin asked. This time, Ban Yue answered, "I didn't release the snakes." Xie Lin was taken aback. What? I didn't release the snakes," Ban Yue repeated. "They ran off on their own. I don't know why, but they don't listen to me anymore." Hearing this, Fu Yao grew impatient. Ban Yue pleaded, "General Hua, I'm not lying." Before Xian Lin responded, Fu Yao cut in rudely, "Anyone would say that after being captured, even if you say it wasn't intentional. I've heard all that before. All those people crossing the pass were clearly injured by your snakes." Show me your hands. You're under arrest. Ban Yue shut up and extended both arms. Fu Yao immediately took out an immortal binding rope and apprehended both Ban Yue and Ke Mo. Then he said, "All right, we've accomplished our goal for this trip. It's all over now." Just then, San Long spoke up. She had no reason to lie. Xie Lin also felt there was a need for further interrogation. He turned to Ban Yue. "Can you not control any of your snakes?" Ban Yue answered, "I can control them, and they'll obey most of the time. But there are times when they won't. I don't know why." After some thought, Xie Lin said, "Why don't you call them out and show us?" Ban Yue was kneeling before him. Now she finally rose to her feet and nodded. Soon, a wine-red scorpion snake slithered out from underneath a corpse, raised its head, and curled itself on a pile of dead bodies. It soundlessly flicked its tongue at the group. Xie Lin was about to take a closer look at the snake, but saw Ban Yue widen her eyes, 
face strange. Xilin's heart dropped and he thought, Oh no. As that thought crossed his mind, the snake stopped flicking its tongue, opened its mouth, and pounced at him in attack. It was a sudden lunge, but Xilin was ready. He was about to grab for it when, boom, something exploded. When he opened his eyes again to see, the snake was already a splatter of guts on the ground, having been thoroughly blown apart. It was a calculated blast too, since none of the venom spilled. Xilin immediately remembered another time when a snake died like that before they entered the Benya ruins, but there was no need to say who did it at this point. He hadn't even had the chance to look at Senlong before a red sleeve flashed before him, barring him and separating him from Ban Yue. On the other side, Fu Yao said coldly, I knew she was lying. Did you think that snake would manage to bite him under these circumstances? Foolish. Ban Yue's face was already pale when she saw that snake, and when she heard him, her head shot up. I didn't do it. I said there are some snakes that don't obey me, and that one was one of them just now. Fu Yao didn't believe a single word. Who knows whether it was disobeying or obeying you. That one wasn't even called forth by me, Ban Yue said glumly. Xilin was about to speak when another two wine-red scorpion snakes poked out from under a different corpse, flicking their tongues and watching them intently. Then a third, a fourth, a fifth. From the mountains of dead bodies and every corner of the pit, there came innumerable scorpion snakes. Everyone stared at Ban Yue, who was kneeling on top of a pile of corpses, and Fu Yao started spinning a ball of spiritual energy in his palm and shouted at her. Make them go away! They can't all disobey! Ban Yue scrunched up her brows, looking as if she was trying to drive them out. Yet, more and more scorpion snakes appeared, curling and crawling, slithering ever closer. Bites from one or two snakes might not kill them, but from hundreds or thousands was harder to say. Even if they didn't die, it wouldn't be pretty. Xilin raised his wrist, about to call forth Ruoye, but saw that when the snakes slithered to a certain distance, they would stop and hesitate, forming a weird circle. It dawned on Xilin, and he glanced at Senlong next to him. He was watching the snakes with condescension and immense contempt. The scorpion snakes seemed to be able to read his eyes and didn't dare approach. They backed off bit by bit, lowering their heads as they did so, pressing their savage heads against the ground submissively like servants. But there seemed to be another power controlling them, not allowing them to abandon their attacks and leave completely. Thus, many of the snakes turned around and slithered towards Fu Yao. Fu Yao swung his hand and a blast of flames burst from his sleeve, killing a circle of snakes and forcing back another. That wouldn't last long, however. Xilin said, Let's get out of here first! Whoosh! Ruo Ye shot out from Xilin's arm and flew upward. But a moment later, another whoosh and it was back on Xilin's arm. Xilin was slightly taken aback and raised his wrist, scolding the silk band now rewrapped around it. What are you doing back here? The array was released. There's nothing stopping you anymore. Hurry and go! But Roya remained wrapped around his arm, trembling, as if it had bumped into something terrifying at the top. Xilin was about to coax it some more when suddenly, a long rope of something fell. Plop! It dropped on Fu Yao's shoulder. Fu Yao went to grab it, and his face changed the moment he brought it before his eyes. It was another scorpion snake that fell from the sky. This caught Fu Yao off guard, and after getting bitten, he hurled the snake toward Ban Yue. Even with her hands tied, she still reflexively tried to catch the snake, and after having caught it, the dark red snake curled itself up around her arm without attacking. Just then, another plop, and a second scorpion snake landed on the ground. Xianin could guess why Ye refused to go up now. Borrowing the faint light of the moon, Xianin raised his head and only just barely saw this sight. Hundreds of little wine-red dots were falling rapidly into the sinner's pit. A snake deluge. The red dots were coming closer. Xianin yelled, Fu Yao, fire! Shoot a stream of fire upward and get rid of them while they're still in the air! Fu Yao bit his palm to break the skin, swung his hand, and a series of blood drops shot out. An instant later, they transformed into a screen of fire that jetted up through the pit. Those sweeping flames rose over 30 meters and hung in midair, disintegrating all scorpion snakes that touched them, burning them to ash, dissolving the snake deluge. Temporarily safe, Xilin let out a breath of relief. That was good, Fu Yao. Thank goodness for you. A spell like that evidently consumed an immense amount of spiritual power, and after one round, 
Fu Yao's face was pale. He turned around and ignited a ring of fire, dispelling the snakes on the ground, and shouted at Ban Yue. And you say those snakes don't obey you? If you weren't controlling them, why wouldn't they attack you? Sen Long laughed. Maybe it's because of your bad luck. They didn't attack us, either. Fu Yao turned to look at him, his eyes sharp and narrowed. Xie Lin could sense trouble. He'd somewhat established a theory about the current situation, but hadn't yet had time to sort through his thoughts, and Xie Lin didn't want to see the two of them start fighting now. Let's figure out what's going on with those snakes first, Xie Lin said. Let's charge out. Fu Yao sneered. <laughs> what's going on? Either the state preceptor of Ban Yue is lying, or the one next to you is causing trouble. Xie Lin glanced at Ban Yue, then at Sen Long, and said, I don't think it's either of them. His tone was gentle but firm. It was the conclusion he came to after much thought. However, Fu Yao must have thought he was shielding them intentionally, and the face illuminated by the flames was unkind. Xie Lin couldn't tell if he was angry or laughing. Your Royal Highness, Fu Yao said, don't play pretend when you know the truth. Do you still remember your place? I'm sure you're already very aware of who exactly that cad next to you is. I refuse to believe you haven't realized it.